अर्बन एंड रूरल टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी मीन्स यूजिंग साइंटिफिक नॉलेज इन प्रैक्टिकल वेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन डिजाइनिंग न्यू मशीन्स फॉर इंडस्ट्री एवरी इंडस्ट्री नीड्स रॉ मटेरियल एंड मैनुअल लेबर फॉर इट्स ऑपरेशन दस इट इज ऑलवेज एडवाइजेबल टू सेट अप एन इंडस्ट्री एट प्लेस वेयर बोथ दीज आर इजिली अवेलेबल इंडस्ट्रीज दैट नीड agricultural by products should be set up in rural areas and those that need huge investments and costly raw material should be set up in or close to towns in other words we can put technology in two categories rural technology and urban technology technology that can help farmers should be made available at the farmer store step technology that can help the urbanities should be encouraged in big towns and cities but it must not be forgotten that as education is necessary to develop technology it is equally essential to put technology into use and so our education should be streamlined according to the kind of technology we need in a particular sector or region the conjurer's revenge passage number 1 now ladies and gentlemen said the conjurer having shown you that the cloth is absolutely empty I will proceed to take from it a bowl of goldfish. Presto! All around the hall, people were saying, "Oh, how wonderful! How does he do it?" But the quick man on the front seat said in a big whisper to people near him, "He had it up to his sleeve." Then the people nodded brightly at the quick man and said, "Oh, of course!" And everybody whispered round the hall, "He had it up his sleeve." Then passes two we have. My next trick, said the conjurer, is the famous Hindustani rings. You will notice that. the rings are apparently separate at a blow they join clang 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 presto there was a general buzz of stupefaction till the quick man was heard to whisper he must have had another lot up his sleeve again everybody nodded and whispered the rings were up his sleeve the brow of conjurer was clouded with the gathering frown passage 3 i will now he continued show you a most amusing trick by which I am unable to take any number of eggs from a hat. Will you some will some gentleman kindly lend me his hat? Oh, thank you. Presto. He extracted 17 eggs and 435 seconds. The audience began to think that he was wonderful. Then the quick man whispered along the front bench he has a hand up his sleeve and all the people whispered it on he has a lot of hands up his sleeve the egg trick was ruined it went on like that all through it transpired from the whispers of the quick man what the conjurer must have concealed up his sleeve 
in addition to the rings hands and fresh several packs of cards a lot of bread a doll's cradle a live guinea pig a 50 cent piece and a rocking chair passage number 4 the reputation of the conjurer was rapidly sinking below zero at the close of the evening he rallied for a final effort ladies and gentlemen he said i will present to you in conclusion the most famous japanese trick recently invented by the natives of tipperary will you sir he continued turning toward the quick man will you kindly hand me your gold watch it was passed to him have i permission to put it into the mortar and pound it to pieces he asked savagely The quick man nodded and smiled. The conjurer threw the watch into the mortar and grasped a sledgehammer from the table. There was a sound of violent smashing. He slipped it up his sleeve. Whispered the quick man. The passage number five now sir continue the conjurer will you allow me to take your handkerchief and punch holes in it thank you you see ladies and gentlemen there is no deception the holes are visible to see the eye the face of the quick man beamed this time the real mystery of the thing fascinated him and now sir will you kindly pass me your silk hat and allow me to dance on it thank you the conjurer made a few rapid passes with his feet and exhibited the hat crushed beyond recognition the passage number 6 there was a great hush upon the audience then the conjurer drew himself up to his full height and with a withering look at the quick man he concluded ladies and gentlemen you will observe that i have with this gentleman's permission broken his watch burnt his collar smashed his spectacles and danced on his hat if he will give me further permission to paint green strips on his overcoat or to tie his suspenders in a knot i shall be delighted to entertain you if not the performance is at an end an army the glorious burst of music from the orchestra the curtain fell and the audience dispersed convinced that there are some tricks at any rate that are not done up the conjurer I have a dream passage 1 5000 years ago a great american in whose symbolic shadow we stand signed the emancipation proclamation this momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of negro slaves who had been searched in a flames of withering injustice 
and it came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of captivity. But one hundred years ago, but one hundred years later, we must face the tragic fact that the Negro is still not free. One hundred years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. One hundred years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. One hundred years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. So, we have come here today to dramatize an appalling condition. The passage number two of the idea, I have a dream. Here we are going to discuss. Let us start the passage number two. In a sense, we have come to our nation's capital to cash a check. Is equal to check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they are signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall here this note was a promise that all men would be guaranteed the the unliable the unalienable rights of life liberty and the pursuit of happiness it is obvious today that America defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great walls of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cash this check. A check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fire's urgency of now. This is a no time to engage in luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. The passage number four of the same presentation, I have a dream, but there is something that I must say to people 
who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice in the process of gaining our rightful place we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred we must for our conduct our struggle on the high struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline we must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence again and again we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force the marvelous new militancy which has engulfed the negro community must not lead us to a distrust of all white people for many of our white brothers as evidence by their presence here today have come to realize that their destiny is tied up with our destiny and their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom we cannot walk alone passage 5 and as we walk we must make the pledge that we shall march ahead we cannot turn back there are those who are asking devotees of civil rights when will you be satisfied we can never be satisfied as long as negro is the victim of unspeakable horror of a police brutality we never be satisfied as long as our bodies heavy with the fatigue of travel cannot be lodging in the more metals of the highways and hotels of the cities we cannot be satisfied as long as negroes basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one we can never be satisfied as long as a negro in mississippi cannot vote and negro in new york believe he has nothing for which to vote no no we are not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream i'm not unmindful that some of you have come here out of great trials and tribulations some of you have come fresh from narrow jail cells some of you have come from areas where your quest for freedom left you battered by the storm left you battered by the storms of persecution and staggered by the winds of police brutality you have been the veterans of creative suffering continue to work with the faith that unearned suffering as redemptive